Good morning. Today is Monday, October 25th. And uh, today in class, we've got a short class period because it's Monday. And so we went over our plate boundary comparison chart. And when we're finished, uh, you are going to be answering the question, uh, question number two, and that it, or for chapter two, and that's how did the South American plate and the African plate move? So you're going to be using this plate boundary comparison chart to um, help formulate your scientific argument. So we'll go. We went over the plate boundary comparison chart. If you have anything different than I have, then I would ask you to go ahead and pause after each um, each time I, I talk about it, each section, and just make sure that you've got everything that I have, okay? So the plate divergent plate boundary and convergent plate boundary, the first question that we had answered was how do these plates move? And we are using evidence from our Listening to Earth article. Uh, according to that article, divergent plates move away from each other and convergent plates move towards each other. And we had talked about in class trying to remember the difference between convergent and divergent. And one of the things that we did was we created these pneumatic devices where we would say, okay, D is for divergent. And then what's a D word that would help us remember that they move away from each other? And the kids thought D for distance would be a good one. And so if you're trying to remember the difference between divergent and convergent, just remember D is for divergent, D is for distance, C is for convergent, and C is for come together. Uh, collide was another word, and I think that was actually in the um, article. And so convergent plate boundaries are plates that are moving towards each other. The second question was, how do the plates in the mantle interact at this plate boundary? And again, we're looking, using our evidence from uh, listening to Earth article. And we also are pulling in some evidence from our SIM. And we know that divergent plate boundaries, there are three things because it's asking how did the plates in the mantle interact. And so first of all, magma fills the space between the plates and then it cools and hardens and it hardens into solid rock. And then number three, over time, it forms a mountain range. Uh, it also forms within those mountain range, it, it could be um, volcanoes. For the chi di or, I'm sorry, convergent plate, again, we're using evidence from the article and from the sim, we know that the two plates slowly, slowly run into each other. One plate is forced underneath the other plate, and over time, the top plate can bend and fold. And then number four, over time, the bottom plate is converted to soft, solid rock. It goes down, it breaks apart, and becomes a part of the man magma. Now, the two pic pictures that I have here, uh, I've got the wrong picture in the divergent plate boundary. I wanted to get a screenshot of the sim instead of that one. That one is a picture that I used a couple years ago for something else. But um, those pictures are there just so that you will remember the evidence that we had, what evidence we used, where we got the evidence. So according to the article, uh, and these are the graphics from the article, and according to our SIMS. <clears throat> okay, and the last section is asking about the landforms that are commonly found at or near these plate boundaries, and then specifically asking about whether earthquakes and volcanoes occur at those plate boundaries. So for divergent plate boundary, again, we're pulling our evidence for, from the Listening to Earth article. We know that divergent plate boundaries form what's called a, a, a mountain range. And so in the middle of the ocean, that would be a mid-ocean ridge. We also know that there are volcanoes at the plate boundary. And so notice the question says, what landforms are commonly found at or near this type of plate boundary. So we've got mid-ocean ridge and volcanoes. Do earthquakes occur at this type of at this type of plate boundary? Well, notice the wording is do earthquakes occur at this boundary? 
And the answer, of course, is yes. And is there volcanic activity at this plate boundary? And if you remember in the sim, we were looking at the actual um, the, the line. We saw a pattern that there was volcano and earthquake activity at that plate boundary. So the answer is yes. When we compare that to convergent plate boundary, the landforms that are commonly found would be a trench. Now, do earthquakes occur at this boundary? Well, according to the sim, we looked at the patterns and the answer is no, they don't occur at the boundary, they occur near the boundary, but that's not the way this is worded. So the answer is no. And therefore, is there volcanic activity at this type of plate boundary? And again, the answer is no. So <clears throat> on the back of your um, graphic organizer, there were two different uh, plate models and your convergent plate boundary model should look like this. Convergent again is when one plate moves underneath the other plate. Uh, the landform again that forms, you can see that V right there, that's a trench. And then this is divergent plate boundaries. Now, the important thing is here, make sure that you have that picture because that's the only one shows that there is no gap. There is, uh, when plates move away from each other at a divergent plate boundary, that material from the mantle comes up and it hardens into hard solid rock. So there's never, never, never a gap anywhere at a plate boundary, okay? And so then the landform that forms would be a mountain or in the ocean, it is the mid-ocean ridge. All right, so we have new evidence from Dr. Moraga. This is really gonna help us determine what exactly happened um, and how the South American plate and the African plate moved. In other words, you're going to be able to write a scientific argument that definitively says whether it was a convergent or a divergent plate boundary. So the new evidence is an email that we get from him. And he says, we just received new evidence from a group of scientists studying the ocean floor at the boundary between the South American plate and the African plate. The scientists told us that a mid-ocean ridge called the Mid-Atlantic Ridge is located along this plate boundary. We hope you will find this evidence helpful as you work to determine how the South American plate and the African plate moved. We eagerly await hearing about your findings. And so I want you to stop. I want you to take a screenshot of this. I want you to put this in your folder, in um, your plate motion folder in GoodNotes. And I want you to highlight the one little piece of evidence. And we're going to call this evidence email from Dr. Moraga. Okay? So go ahead and do that. Okay, so you're back, You've, you have copied this into good notes, you have highlighted the one piece of evidence, and I'm not going to tell you what it is. I'm, I'm checking that you are using your scientific um, skills to pull out the, the little piece of evidence that he gave us. I want you to use that information, combine that with all the information that you have in your graphic organizer. What he is saying is that entire length of that plate, the, the landform is a mid-ocean ridge, okay? That is a mid-ocean ridge. Now, your homework is to write a paragraph. You only need one paragraph. Uh, and I want you to write a scientific argument that answers the chapter two question, which is how did the South American plate and the African plate move? This homework is in Schoology today. It is a PDF called How Did the South American Plate and African Plate Move? Go ahead and copy that into Good Notes. You can type your answer, please. Please don't write. It's really difficult sometimes to read handwriting, and I think writing is better. I want you to use words in the word bank for your response. You obviously won't use all of them, but these are the words that we have had so far, and I want you to use those in your response, okay? So make sure, look at the very bottom. It says, be sure to include what type of plate boundary is between these plates 
and how you can tell, use evidence to support your response. We have evidence from the article. We have evidence from our simulation. We have evidence from Dr. Moraga's email. So use as much evidence as you can. Uh, talk about the most important evidence first. And obviously, use your key concepts. We have seven key concepts. And I expect you to use those key concepts when you are using reasoning to explain your answer in your scientific argument. All right, let me know if you have any questions, and I hope to see you soon.